In Lyon, it's a point of honour to sit down to eat in the morning, at lunchtime and in the evening. When you stay for three or four days in Lyon, you lose on average a week of your life per year because of all the cholesterol and you gain about three kilos in weight per month as well. Lyon's reputation is built by its chefs, but it's also built with the customers, because if the customer doesn't like sitting down to eat, you can make the most delicious food in the world, but you'll still have no one in your restaurant to eat it. Gastronomy in Lyon is much more than just an art, it's also a religion. Lyon is a stop of place, it's a crossroads, and there are lots of taverns and restaurants. These taverns have come to be known more and more as Bouchon, small but lively, warm and popular eating places. While everyone has their own version of where the word bouchon comes from, everyone agrees on what the concept is. A real bouchon in Lyon has one characteristic, and that's great meat and lots of it. It's a cuisine that comes from the markets and is well prepared. It's simple cooking, pork, lentils, herring, potatoes, blot sausage. Then it's all about the atmosphere. Everyone knows everyone else, everyone chats, there's no airs or graces. We're all of the same ilk, and when there's not enough atmosphere, the owner gets everything going. Some of the many bouchons are also filled with history, like here at the Garret. It was here that Jean Moulin and other resistance members came to hide and hold their meetings. And there's one simple reason. All the bouchons have white curtains so you can see from the inside what's happening on the street. But from the outside, you can't tell what's going on, so you were well hidden. Resistance fighters preferred meeting the head Jean Moulin here. The stomach of the town is its famous markets known as the Hal. It's where some of the region's best-known suppliers set up shop. Joseph Viola, who runs three bouchons in the city, comes here to pick the produce he'll serve at his tables. From San Marcelin cheese to the famous Mary Shah and veal livers from Maurice Trollier. And there's just time to stop off at Colette Sibilia for the machon the typical savoury breakfast that's washed down with wine. I was 19 when I first started eating it, and now I'm 82. So that's 63 years I've been eating this way every morning, and I'm in great shape. Every time I come to the Yale, it feels like I'm stumbling upon a theatre full of artists, craftsmen who have set up their stall, who are passionate about what they do. There's a really warm atmosphere here. A few forkfuls of homemade pâté later, at Chez Daniel et Denise, Joseph Viola is a special kind of chef. Trained in some of the country's top restaurants, he's been named one of France's best artisans since 2004. When you think of this accolade, you always think of people working in palaces or in double or triple-starred Michelin restaurants. I've tried to look at things from a different perspective. I noticed that the clientele was changing and that they didn't want their food to be served in delicate little cubes. They wanted a product on their plate. So I said to myself, let's do what we like, let's do what I learnt, and let's try and put it all in a bouchon. Here they serve the best traditional dishes of Lyon cuisine, like pike dumplings, and breast game birds. So we start with a sausage, then I want a plat du jour, a piece of game with a jus, and a pan of green beans in olive oil. With the authority of his red, white, and blue collar, Joseph's kitchen is strictly organized. The house speciality is a foie gras pâté wrapped in pastry. In the city's three viola bouchons, some 300 slices of it are served every day. And that might have something to do with Daniel Adenise's very local history. It's worth knowing that this restaurant actually used to be a cold meat delicatessen, so the link is always there. The chef elaborated on his recipe back in 2004, and just five years later, its success was so great that Joseph was crowned the world champion for his pâté en croûte. I put the veal liver at the base of my pâté. Why? Because the base starts to cook before the middle. Le foie gras then goes in the middle of the terrine because that's the part that has to be the least cooked. A very precise dish that goes in the oven for 45 minutes before it's then sliced and enjoyed.
On voit bien la farce. So here you can see the stuffing, the layer of veal liver, then more stuffing, the foie gras, the sweetbreads, and then the jelly. And you can see we have several layers, and the foie gras, as you see it, is not too cooked. There's no trace of any duck fat. And that's when I say, we've done a fabulous job.